the USF Dons uh, victorious tonight, 65-60, over a tough Davidson team. I was talking about the the culture of this program in the pregame and just reeling off the number of years that uh, Bob McKillop's team has won 25, 26, 24, year after year. So while it was a tough ball game here tonight, Coach, and tough to score in the first half, you end up on the winning side 65-60 over a team that could well be in the NCAA tournament. Good win for your team. Yeah, thank you. It was. It certainly was. I think uh, – this, as we discussed in, in the pregame, this was a good opportunity for us to kind of see where we were in terms of playing a real quality opponent, uh, a team that would finish, you know, somewhere in the top half of our league. And to your point, a uh, program that really understands and knows how to win. And uh, it was a, an interesting start, a little sloppy, um, but I did think we were guarding the whole time. And I thought eventually we would kind of break the seal offensively. And, and to the credit of our guys, we got going a little bit in the second half and extended that lead to 14 a couple of times. And, and down the stretch, obviously, they're big, hit a couple threes. Tip your cap, you know. <laughs> you got to take away some things. And if he's going to make a couple, you got to live with it. But I thought we played the end-of-game situation well in terms of taking care of the ball, getting to the foul line, and uh, a, a limiting their opportunities except for that last uh, free throw block out that we missed. I gave a three to lead, but he missed it. Let's talk about a couple of guys that didn't start, but I felt were factors in this game. Josh Coonan yep. came off the bench, hit big threes, made two big free throws down the stretch when they're in that kind of comeback mode. You probably don't win this game tonight without the performance from Josh Coonan. No, we don't. <laughs> just straight up, we don't. You know, I think he's uh, he's doing a phenomenal job, and, and I just gave him a lot of credit in the locker room after the game because this is a guy that started most games he's been here, you know, since he's been here his first two years, and and there's not an ounce of ego in his blood, and he's totally comfortable and happy coming off the bench if that's for the greater good of the team. And I thought he he was our sixth starter tonight. You know, he came in changed the way the game was being played, loosened us up offensively with a couple threes in the first half, and just made it more difficult for their bigs. You know, they were used to guarding Pat, Yallian, Vova, boom, now here's Josh, one that can stretch the floor a little bit, and he, he did a fantastic job. Just to expand a little bit on his attitude, because I, I saw him at USF Baseball last spring, and it was after you had beefed it up and added guys that play his position. Yeah. And I said, man, your roster's looking pretty good. I said, you know, there's going to be a little competition at your spot. He said, this will make us better. Yeah. It will make me better. Yeah. Bring it on. I love it. And that's what you want to hear, right? No, that's it. That's it. That's the mentality and the culture of our program. And I think Josh exhibits that on a day-to-day -day basis. He's uh, it's been phenomenal since he's been on campus. He's a, a great ambassador for the university, someone they should be incredibly proud of, and he exhibited on the court tonight. You're, and another guy that came off the bench, while he doesn't play a lot of minutes, Mark Ovetsky. I yeah. thought he was a big factor in this game. Masalski was in a little bit of foul trouble. Tape had a little bit of foul trouble. And this was more Mark Ovetsky's kind of game. The game uh, on Thursday, not so when much. it's going up and down, <laughs> he only played six minutes. But when you get into a half-court war with a team like this, with teams in the conference that play this way, he can really help you off the bench because he's a wall in there defensively, isn't he? Uh, he, he to, to your point about Josh, us not winning the game tonight without him, I don't think we would have won without Vova tonight either. I thought he came in, stabilized us in the first half, did an awesome job protecting the rim. In the second half, when we went on our little run, him and Dima actually did a really good job defensively during that segment. He banged two free throws in the first half, had a nice dunk in the second. And, and to have the luxury to have a guy like Vova off the bench, really like uh, one of our three centers, uh, you know, he's a Pac-12 player. He's, he's good. And he did a great job tonight. Yeah, talk about your guard play. Bouye, you know, he, he makes the big shots when he needs to. Yeah. That three-pointer, he must have been about eight feet behind the NBA line Correct. down the stretch. And, you know, Shabazz, while he struggled a bit, forced a fair number of turnovers. He yeah. was tough defensively. And I thought Stefanini was pretty consistent over the course of the ball game. Yeah, you know, I think the, the thing that people need to realize about tonight is that Jamari and Khalil took on incredible challenges on the defensive end. Foster Lawyer, the point guard, uh, had 26 in their last game, six for six from three. Khalil, you know, to be honest, just made him look bad tonight. He did a great job pressuring him. He took his ball a couple times. Did never let him initiate the offense comfortably. And then Jamari took on Lee, a uh, great shooter, one of the most prolific shooters in the country. And Jamari shut him down, only gave him one three all night. And I think the, they had to exi uh, exude a lot of energy defensively. And maybe that's why we weren't as efficient offensively. But again, that was the game plan. We could not give up threes to those guys. And to only give a combination of two threes to both those guys was huge. One perhaps area of concern, second straight game, high turnover numbers. Third eight, straight game. Yeah. Does that concern you? And maybe, or is it just, you know, style of opponent? 
Uh, you know, again, you're scoring it. A little yeah. tough to score here against this good team, but yeah. you turned it over the other night a few times, still scored 92 points. Right. So. No, it's a, it's an issue. I mean, we got to address it. I think uh, we're, we're playing a little differently this year. You know, we're playing with, with bigger guys. Uh, you know, we're not as um, – as free flowing at the moment, and we'll we'll get there. But I think it's things that we can control for the most part. So I think we'll be able to clean it up. We we just don't have that much time to practice right now. You know, we're playing game after game after game, so we're not getting a lot of uh, opportunity. To what we call like dummy offense, where we're really kind of learning and figuring out each other. Um, but again, to be three and zero and understand that we can get better in that area excites me because it means our ceiling's higher. You said it three and zero after three ball games. You've you know having this rash of games early on. Is this about where you kind of wanted the team to be at this point? Obviously, the three and zero record is nice, of but the way you're playing as well. Yeah, I mean, I thought you know our first two efforts were good, um, but they were opponents that I expected to beat, and today was the first one where you know they're an incredible, incredibly quality opponent. Uh, you know, I think they'll be a top fifty team by the end of the year. And for us to come in and kind of, we did control the game after the first, you know, 10 to 12 minutes uh, and hold on for dear life down the stretch <laughs> when they started banging some shots. But uh, it, this is a big win, and this will, this will go a long way for us. You've got Samford, not Stanford, but right. Samford for those listening, driving home, right. uh, coming up on Monday. What do you know about this team that you'll host on Monday night at uh, uh, 6 o'clock? Well, Coach Sapphire has a scout, and, uh, you know, we haven't talked a whole lot about him yet because we wanted to make sure that we, we had our full focus on this game tonight. But I think they're going to play a little bit like Prairie View. Uh, they'll pressure kind of good up and down a little bit, want the tempo going, which is good. You know, for us at home, I'll, I'll, I'll take that and see where we land. But uh, we, we have to improve in taking care of the ball. So that'll be a big key for us on Monday. You hit on this earlier. A lot of games in a short stretch, so you haven't had those full practices. I imagine since you're turning right back around again in 48 hours, a little bit lighter tomorrow. Yeah, we'll shoot a little bit. We'll stretch. We'll get, a, get some blood flow going, get a little bit of a sweat to kind of run this game out of us, but we won't do much. We'll make sure we're really organized defensively for Sanford and let it roll on Monday night. Coach, uh, savor the moment. Your team's 3-0. and Nice start. A Thank good you. win over a quality opponent here inside this NBA building. Yep. Has to feel pretty good, and uh, we'll see you on Monday on the Hilltop. Thanks a lot, Pat. All right, that's USF head man Todd Golden. The uh, Dons uh, win the ball game here, 65-60 over Davidson.